So I trust you've come expectant and with anticipation. But I think at the very outset, let's just still ourselves before God. And we say, come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's here, You're right in our midst, moving amongst us. And last night the waves of the Spirit were just coming in. Right from the outset, people being healed and set free and moving forward. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart flows rivers of living water. Do you want rivers of living water? Well, some people do. That's encouraging anyway. I'm not alone. Yeah, rivers of living water. Yeah. But you know, Jesus started off, come. He misquoted. I think, what? Jesus misquoted? Isaiah 55 in the best version starts, Ho! Oh! <laughs> Come to the waters. He's getting his attention. He's getting your attention. That's why it was, Ho! Oh! Where I come from, that means, Ho oh, ye! Yeah! Get attention. She's just checking, yes, I'm right. <laughs> yeah. And. Isaiah was getting the, I got through Isaiah was getting the people's attention when said, come on, let look, come to the waters. <clears throat> I'm just going to read it out of, that's wrong, that's Isaiah 3, that won't get me any far, very far. Isaiah 55, I'm reading it from the Passion, I don't use the Passion that often, but it says, listen, are you thirsty for more? Yes, come to the refreshing waters and drink, even if you have no money. We've got a card reader. <laughs> yes, even if you have no money, come by and eat. Yes, come and buy with all the, the wine, come and buy all the wine and milk you desire. It won't cost a thing. Why spend your hard-earned money on something that can't nourish you? Or work so hard for something that can't satisfy? So listen carefully to me, and you will enjoy a sumptuous feast. Yes, a sumptuous feast, delighting in the finest of food, something to look forward to. Pay attention and come closer to me and hear that your total being may flourish. That's what the Lord said to us. Our total being may flourish. And promise, I will enter into an everlasting covenant with you and I will show you the same faithful love I showed David. Our God is telling us to come, 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 come and drink. You know, Jesus didn't need to shout, Ho! Oh! Because by that time, they should have recognized who he was. And they should have recognized and been listening to what he says. Because he says in Revelation, didn't he? If you've got ears to hear. So really he's saying, come on, I'm here. I've got this. Come to me. Drink. Eat of what I'm bringing. The finest of fare, the best of water, so that it's coming out of So you will be satisfied and fully, fully, fully nourished. You know, some people come and drink. Other people 
goggle. What do I mean by that? Drink, you take it in, you really take it into your stomach. To goggle, you taste and spit out. Which are you? Are you a goggler or are you a drinker? Jesus says, come on, drink. That's our invitation today, to drink deeply, because there's going to be amazing worship all day. If you were here last night, you got a taste it, and that was the starter. I can't say starter for 10, but it was a <laughs> starter for six. You know, and we work on, we don't go down, and we don't have to build ourselves up. We're where we were last night, let's say, right, come on, Holy Spirit, let's take off where we were. So we keep reaching higher heights today. You know, and what Sue and Ali are going to bring, bring is food to nourish us, to feed us, to set us up. And just come to me. When Elijah was fleeing, he ate. And the angel said, woke him up again. Eat some more. You need more to keep you going for what's coming. That's what I'm saying today. Let's eat of the fare that's been offered us because we need this to keep us going and what's going. Isaiah, he says there and so many times, it's freely and there's no restriction. So the more you can take in, the better it is. Don't think I'm greedy. We don't do that here. It's abundant supply. So let's be filled with Holy Spirit. God's provision for each one of us, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, not just for the next day. Let's keep on being filled. Let's be seeing what God wants to do. He's got something to tell us. And he wants us to say, are you listening? I'm not going to shout at you. I'm just saying, are you listening? Come to the waters and drink. Thank you, Rob. Well, what a great day. Just want to praise God. Just want to honor him. Just want to sing to the king. We want to give him glory. Jesus. How wonderful you are.
put his hand down in two places. One on Chris. Pray that Chris can get downstairs so he can be on Zoom so he can partake of something in this. He's been in his bed for quite a few days. And the other is from for Eric and Eve. Chris, do you want to just say? Um, Eve was taken into hospital um, earlier on this week. They did a CAT scan, scan and she has a large pituitary gland, gland and they're waiting to do an MRI scan. Just before we before left, we left come out come here this morning. Oh, this is crazy. We've got a message from Eric. He is struggling, he is struggling with high blood pressure, high which is why he wasn't on Zoom this morning, last, last night. But Eve collapsed but in, Eve the collapsed in the bathroom this morning. And she is refusing, she is refusing to let him send for an ambulance. She, she trusts the Lord, but the Lord can use medics as well. Yes. Yeah. But in this instance, Father, we're just asking that Holy Spirit will come down and touch. Your finger be upon them. Father, they begin to see. Yeah. For Eve to be up off the floor. That you would go right to the heart of whatever condition. I know what the medics have said, but there are times when you know better. And we go right to the root of the cause. And we speak healing. We rebuke any, anything of the enemy. And we speak healing into Eve's body now. Every cell of her body, we speak healing. And for Eric, Father, touch him. Actually, re rectify this blood pressure problem bring him into that place yes he trusts you they both trust you we trust you touch them father we ask in jesus name yeah. and for chris that you would strengthen him so that he can be here you know not here but on zoom with us 
Yeah. Thank you, Father. You're a wonder-working God. Miracles happen. Father, we saw last night as you were working, right from the outset, right through to the end of the meeting, you were touching people's hearts and minds. And we recognize that you're going to continue touching because you love to heal. You love to bless. And we say, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Okay, John, thank you. Now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Walls fall down in Jesus' name. Strongholds break in Jesus' name. Amen. We are healed in Jesus' name. There are miracles in Jesus' name. So pour it out in Jesus' name. Amen.
we give our lives to you. It's so beautiful. Oh, we sing to you. Oh, we cry out. Oh, we cry out. Oh, yes, we worship you. We worship you. We give our lives to you. We give our lives to you. Oh, we sing out. I'll pull again. I've turned the congregation right out. Oh, we cry out. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God. His name is Jesus. His name is. Jesus, his name is Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God. We love the church, oh, yes. the body of Christ, Jesus. Christ. I think that's who is coming His back. name is Jesus. Let's speak out his name, Jesus. Jesus, wonderful, wonderful Jewish. Jesus, <laughs> Counselor, Almighty God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. He is counselor. He is counselor. He is mighty God. He is mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Omnipotent. The Omnipotent. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. He is radiant. He is radiant. The Almighty God. He is counselor. He is counselor. He is mighty God. He is mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Omnipotent. The Omnipotent. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. He is radiant. He is radiant. The Almighty God. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Sacrifice the perfect sacrifice of 
unto us what sin has stolen. Once and for all you tore the veil wide open. Your power is stronger still. Oh, all-powerful is almighty and I believe God's wanting to heal at this merry time let's not say we're putting it off till tomorrow I believe God's sin he wants to heal he wants to break some chains the shackles off the wrist sickness whatever it is as we carry on worshiping let the worship flood you fill you the power of God come into you We've asked for Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's here. Let him come in and heal. You don't need anybody to pray for you. The Holy Spirit. He's the perfect physician. But if you do feel you want someone, just give somebody a nudge and say, help me. So, okay. So just carry on worshiping. If you're going to sit down, you know, you're quite welcome to do that. Bring whatever condition you've got before Father. Let Holy Spirit come and let's see some healings flow. Yeah, go on, John.
stands. The cross still stands. The blood still flows. The work is finished and hell still knows that the grave is still empty. The stone is still rolled and you're still high and lifted up. You're still seated on the throne. The cross still stands. The blood still flows. The work is finished and hell still knows. Grave is still empty. The stone
age to age we will sing all praise all praise to the name of all names Jesus you As we're moving on, keep basking in the presence. Keep our ears open to what Sue's going to be saying, but also what Holy Spirit's saying. And keep receiving that touch from him. You can sit down. Yeah, I got into trouble last night. Yes. Helen says to me, you didn't introduce Sue or Ali, did you? Oh, oh, I didn't. I didn't introduce them. I was working on the assumption everybody here knows them. <laughs> and the other assumption, and perhaps being a bit presumptuous, but you don't introduce family. <laughs> wow, we count it such a privilege to be family. Um, you know, we are going to spend eternity together, but it's nice being family here on earth, isn't it? So thank you. Um, Father, we just thank you for your presence. And Father, again, um, Lord God, I love that illustration. Lord God, that we need to drink and not just gargle. And we want to drink of your word today. Lord, we want to really partake of it. We want to consume it. Lord, we want it to really equip us and empower us um, for the days that are coming. 
Lord God, and so we thank you for your word that brings life. Lord, we thank you for your word that fills us with love. Lord God, that there is no fear. Lord God, because we're filled and equipped and empowered for the era that we're in. Father, we just give you glory for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. I've got new glasses, so I'm trying to get used to them. They've got bits that like you see close up and bits that make you see far away. So that's a good pair of glasses for a prophet, isn't it, really? So <laughs> I just got to get used to them. <laughs> I was driving yesterday and I could see on the road really nice, but I couldn't see the sat nav very well. So I need to get used to that. So um, we've got four sessions today. And, um, you know, we feel it, it's really key and really important. Um, and we're going to be speaking about the roles of the watchman, the gatekeeper. Oh, I think this has gone a bit weird. Um, and the intercessor um, in, the, in the days ahead and how we equip ourselves and we position ourselves um, for God to really use us um, so that we are a shield of protection um, for our families, for our church, for our communities and our nations. And not only a shield of protection, not only that we see you know, if the enemy's coming, but we see what God is doing as well. How cool is that? Um, so we are living in really turbulent times. I'm taking these glasses off because everything's wobbling. Oh, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're having an earthquake then. That's a bit strange. Um, yeah. Um, so we, we're living in really turbulent times, aren't we? And it seems that everything is shaking, literally, with the glasses as well. Maybe that's an illustration. But Haggai 2 um, says this in verse 6 and 7. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations that doesn't mean just is Israel and Palestine and the Middle East. It's all nations. Um, but the, God says, but at the same time, this is what we know God is saying. He is filling his house with glory. You know, there's a shaking going on, but there's a glory being released as well, isn't it, in this time? This is a time for God's people, for us to be strong in the Lord and to know that God is with us, no matter what is going on. You know, God is still on the throne as we've sang today, and he's still with us. As the church, we need to be dealing with our stuff. You know, we cannot afford to have sin. We cannot afford to turn a blind eye to things. We need to deal with our stuff so that we create a beautiful altar of holiness where the Lord can come in power and, and really manifest his presence because our programs are not going to draw people to Jesus. It's the power and the presence of God that, that this is a place where signs and wonders and miracles happen and that's where people will be drawn to in the days ahead we need to repent we need to walk in forgiveness and allow God to repair the walls so that we uh, will once again work together in harmony you know that we need a real unity and a real harmony uh, in the church that we can be vessels um, through which the Lord can shine and I've loved it recently. Ali and I have been um, staying on, on a couple of farms and with friends who live in the country. And um, for, you know, a person who's used to living in the city uh, where there's light shining all the time, people seem to have a thing about shining lots of lights in the garden of a night. Um, but so you can't see, you know, the stars quite as brightly. But, you know, in the countryside, when you're in the midst of the darkness, those stars twinkle so brightly, don't they? You know, and that's what God wants us to be, you know, so full of his power and his glory and his presence, you know, that his light shines and people want what you've got. You know, people are drawn to the presence of God. People are searching for the spiritual things, aren't they? 
And, you know, we need to be moving in God's power and presence. Amos 3 verse 7 tells us that the Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to the servant, the prophets. And so we need to be really attuned and really listening, but we need to know who the prophets are and what are they saying and discerning. You know, uh, we were talking earlier on discernment. Again, we'll be looking at that because it's such a major thing. We don't just accept what everyone says. Um, you know, go away and check out what we're saying and what we're bringing. Check up. It's, you know, according to what the word of God says. We need to understand what God is doing in this very key time. If we don't understand what God is doing, we're going to be doing the wrong thing. Um, and we're going to be stuck in the old wineskin. Jeremiah 15 verse 19 says this. We know that a prophet is a mouthpiece for the Lord. And this is a real challenge um, for the prophets. You know, there are a lot of false prophets and a lot of deception around. Um, such a lot of rubbish out there at the moment. Um, even says in the last days even the elect will be deceived and we really need to hear the voice of the Lord and need to move in real accurate discernment to know what's from the Lord and what is from the world and what is from the devil and we're going to be teaching um, we're doing a series at the moment on Tuesday nights on the prophetic and one of them is going to be all about discernment and fake prophecy and deception um, because I don't know how many of you, if we said put your hands up, I bet most of us will have had emails or text messages saying, you know, our lost, lost relative over in America or Canada or somewhere has left you a lot of money. Uh, and all you need to do is send your bank details, you know, uh, and send this little donation. Or, you know, there's, there's um, a package that you need to pay to have delivered and... You know, there's just a million of these things and we need to be discerning. And, you know, we had a lady in our team and Ali and I were devastated and broken hearted because we could not persuade her that she was not going to be a multimillionaire soon. And it's desperately sad because she was giving everything she had into this black hole and um, believing that one day soon she was going to be very rich. And we could not tell her. She just would not listen at all. And she's lost lots of money. And she just was refusing to listen because they tell you, you know, um, that don't listen to anyone around you and blah, blah, blah. And we so need to be operating in discernment, don't we, in these days. And to be able to trust one another, you know, that we ha have blind spots that if I'm I'm being deceived. Someone can come and say to me, Sue, we think that's wrong. Can we check that out with you? Um, and it's so urgent in these days. I had a dream. Did anyone else have a dream last night? I had a dream last night. And mine was a bit bizarre dream, but I really do believe it was from the Lord. And it was where many, many Christians were being deceived and brought, brought into these Christian sects and cults um, where the money was being taken off them and it was just alarming and I knew God was warning me you know of the days that were coming into where Christians are watching things you know on YouTube and on all these channels um, without really checking out who they're watching and you know what the root of it really is um, and so I felt it was a confirmation um, from the Lord about that what happens when people are not listening to God? Jeremiah 6 verse 10 says, To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them and they find no pleasure in it. And, you know, we're living in those days, aren't we, right now? We cannot be those people that Jeremiah described. We need to be alert. We need to be awake. We need to be really tuned in and listening and responding quickly to what the Lord is saying. The Lord gave Jeremiah, I said this last night, 
um, 6, 16 and 17 twice to me within one minute um, um, early in the morning of the 7th of October and I knew God was speaking and you know it wasn't very long after I think within the hour that Israel was attacked and you know we we need to be praying for the situation and we need to be praying for Israel but it just was such an illustration of what pride and arrogance can do because the people of Israel were have been boasting about they have the latest most advanced security systems and armies and everything and yet when it really mattered they were found partying and sleeping and the consequences I believe for every single one of us are going to be really dramatic in the days ahead um, and we cannot afford to be found not listening when God is sounding the alarm and sounding the trumpet and we will do that at some point today we'll sound the shofars um, you know really to to release a sound across this whole region and this nation you know calling people to arise and to wake up um, it's it's really absolutely important so Jeremiah 6 16 and 17 says that this is what the Lord says stand at the crossroads and look ask for the ancient paths ask where the good is and walk in it you will find rest for your souls and you said, we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said, we will not listen. Wow, what a warning. You know, it was reported that the Egyptians had warned Israel and they weren't listening. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. Clearly, the watchmen, the gatekeepers, and the intercessors were not working effectively. Another recent example for us was a coach crash that happened in Wirral. It involved school children, which was really very, very heartbreaking. As soon as we heard what had happened, we mobilized our team to pray, and we had it out on Facebook. And I really believe that there was less people killed because we got people mobilized quickly. There's a police officer who lives in Wirral, and um, she's a, a, a very powerful intercessor. And God had showed her and her team that there was going to be something catastrophic happening on that, that actual stretch of motorway. And they had been praying and praying. And I, I really believe, although they were really heartbroken, you know, that there were two deaths and a young man's life you know, um, changed um, catastrophically, really, with his injuries, um, you know, that it could have been so much worse that they were praying and it was a good thing. What would have happened if nobody had prayed? And that's the question, you know, we cannot um, watch what is going on in our communities, gang crime, knife crime, gun crime going on, other things going on, um, you know, bizarre accidents happening to people. We need to wake up and see that the enemy has taken territory while we've been sleeping. It seems across the church that there's little joined up working going on at all between the watchmen, the gatekeepers and the intercessors. You know, we need the watchmen to be awake. We need the gatekeepers to understand where the gate is and how to stand in that gate, when to open it, when to close it, and how to mobilize the intercessors. Again, we've got lots of people praying, but if we're not praying the things that are on God's heart and the things he's sounding the alarm about, then we're missing completely what God is wanting to do. So it's really essential um, that we all understand and we all serve God, especially for the watchmen, the gatekeepers and the intercessors in this time. You need it for the local church. What is the enemy wanting to do and bring into church to destroy the work of God? You know, we need to be awake, don't we? You know, and understanding what is happening. So we're going to look at the roles today of the watchman, the gatekeeper and the intercessor. And just to say, you know, the watchman is a prophet. 
Um, but the important thing is to understand what makes them different from other um, prophets. Who do they have authority to speak to? You know, they have authority in the spirit to speak to individuals. You know, they won't tend to be the prophets who come and give you the nice jacuzzi words of encouragement. You know, they're the ones who are going to really bring that cutting edge warning words, um, which are really important. They speak to cities and to nations, to businesses and organizations, and they can speak to all of creation. Most of us understand the importance of prophets speaking to individuals. Um, we can bring direction, encouragement, and don't we all need that? You know, we so need that in these days. But, you know, let us look at the significance of cities and nations. In the past, cities, for example, like Chester and York, um, were built with huge walls around them. Uh, for their protection, and they would have understood the roles very clearly, um, you know, of having the gates manned by gatekeepers, having the watchmen, um, you know, on duty. They would understand the gatekeepers would know the authority that they had to close and open the gates. They wouldn't just open them from anybody coming in. You know, the watchman would know whether the enemy was coming or whether it was friend coming. If we have no watchman on the walls, it's an open invitation for the enemy to come in and to take the land. I just want Ali to just share a great example. Yeah, so um, where we live, um, around the corner to us is a big house, but the back garden is a long garden, so we can see it from our landing. And um, it's been empty for a while. And of course, it's a busy road, you know, so it's very easy, you know, for people to go past and people to notice. Um, my husband's very observant and, you know, um, he sees things that I don't notice. He should have been a policeman. But anyway, um, he, um, he's always watching and he's looking to see if there's any suspicious people around and so on. And he'd already clocked, there were a few youths around a few weeks previous. So he'd already clocked them and thought, hmm, I wonder what they're up to. Anyway, on a Friday night, um, we were um, just busy going to do something, and then he noticed these three U's again. It didn't help that one of them had really bright red hair, so that's not helpful. But anyway, he, he noticed that they had come round the back of the house, so of course they couldn't be seen from the busy road. And obviously they weren't up to any good. And he could see that they were going to try and enter into the property. So straight away... He thought, right, I'm going to phone the police. I'm going to phone the police. But it's Friday night, <laughs> so, you know, you don't think you're going to get anywhere. So he phones the police, and straight away, he's put through to this policewoman who says, we're on patrol, we're right there. You know, tell us. So he then was able to explain exactly where they were, what they were doing. So I was, like, watching. I was telling him what they were up to because we were sort of keeping a distance back so they couldn't see us. And he described everything, and he said, and I think when you come, they will try and escape, you know. Um, but he, he said, um, you know, but if you come, you know, right now, you'll catch them. And lo and behold, and we couldn't believe this, this big police van arrived with a dog as well. And he was like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, you know. And straight away, they came, and then um, they, the, the three youths who had, by this time had got into the house, they were sort of in the kitchen area, they were obviously looking to see what they could steal and so on, and uh, they were taken by surprise. They had no idea, and there's these policemen right there, and they were just caught, and they came out with their hands up like this, surrender, you know, um, and of course the dog was there as well, and so they were taken away into the van. And, uh, and then, of course, um, they, were, they were cautioned and so on. But the Holy Spirit was speaking, and he was saying so strongly, you see, the church, we have been asleep. We have been so asleep. We have watched the enemy take from our relatives, from ourselves, whether it's health issues, whether it's finance, whether it's broken relationships, whatever. We've been asleep. 
We have not been observant. But you know, we have the authority. You know, just like the police, we have the authority there and then to straight away, to declare, you know, and say, no, not on our watch. No. You know, we've been singing about the victory, haven't we? I mean, the songs, the words, the words we've been singing today have been incredible. If we really grasp hold of those words and what they mean and the authority we carry, then the, the enemy should not be taking over our land, you know. Um, and, and so the very fact, you know, that straight away, I mean, we could not believe Friday night in, in St. Helens, we couldn't believe the police were actually straight there, you know. And then we found out later the result of it because somebody we know actually owns that property and he got a call to say that these Jews had broken in. And um, to cut the story shorter, um, they, the young lads paid for all the damage they had done, which was amazing. So it feels like, you know, they really got the retribution, you know, um, God was redeeming what had been stolen. And, you know, I think it's such a powerful lesson to us today. You know, what the enemy has stolen, God will always redeem and much more. You know, but we have to be alert. We have to be watchful. We have to be ready. And through prayer, through declaring, then things start to shift and to change. And not accept that this is always going to be like this. Because it's not. Because this land, these uh, this area here, it belongs to the king, Amen. the king of kings. We yes. belong to the king. So why are we putting up with stuff with our own lives? Why do we put up with it for our families? Um, so the watchman, so yes, a prophet is a watchman, but we too, you know, we're told to be watchful and alert in the spirit to see what is going on. Awesome. Leading up to and since Brexit, there's been many negotiations going on, hasn't there? Including our border controls, which has been a major issue. And today there's a constant battle politically um, across the nations regarding the many thousands who are coming in illegally um, and dangerously risking their lives on overcrowded boats, completely unfit. Um, for the journey, you know, um, tiny children being put in these boats. But it's been impossible to completely check on the people coming in or their agendas. Um, and it's not just about people coming in by these means, but it's the illegal drugs that come in. It's the guns that are brought in. Um, and our borders are not secure. And, you know, again, you know, we need to be watching over um, and praying and seeing things stopped in prayer, you know, before they even get near any of the security forces who are doing their best, aren't they? Who is responsible? You know, is it the government or is it the church? I believe God's people need to rise up with the power and authority that he's given to us. We can't just sing about power and authority. We've got to actually receive it and actually use it. Stop thinking that you're too weak or too vulnerable or not good enough or all the excuses, you know, that the enemy has piled on to God's people. We've got to believe who God says we are and we've got to move in that power and authority. At the end of the day, the government can do many things, but the battle is not against flesh and blood. You know, it's against principalities and powers as in Ephesians 6 verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, it warning us about our enemy, he says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert, be watchful, your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So we need to be awake. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from Edmund Burke, who said, All it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. 
um, if we come before God with clean hands and pure heart, we have the ability in God to exercise dominion and to do something good. Hallelujah. As God's children, we should be using that power that is available to us through Jesus uh, to see our communities shifted back to God. It's not too late. Back early in 2002, some of you will remember the story, um, Chief Constable Norman Betterson from Merseyside Police had a letter leaked saying that Merseyside was the drugs distribution capital of the UK. And I prayed and asked God um, what we should do about it. And God gave me a prophetic word, which I believe is still um, powerful today. And he said, it is time for the church to arise and to declare a stop in the heavenly realms and a turning of this tide of evil. And, you know, that is up to us, isn't it? You know, to really move in the power and authority um, and to release, you know, the angelic forces, you know, into our communities. How do we do it? We do it with God's word. It's full of answers for us, isn't it? Isaiah 61, my, one of my favorites, of, one of our all-time favorites for everyone, isn't it, really? The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me. You know, you don't do it on your own. You don't do it in your own strength or your own ability. You know, we do it because God has chosen us. God has commissioned us. God has anointed us for such a time as this to proclaim good news to the poor. How, my goodness, do the people around us need hope and good news? Good news is such a tonic, isn't it, in the midst of all the bad news that's going on. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Wow. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Who are they? Who are they? Who is the they that this is speaking about? You know, will it says they will be called oaks of righteousness that's you and that's me you know we have an oak tree that overhangs our garden and it's so powerful you just watch it growing and it brings life all across you know the area people the birds are come the squirrels come and uh, there's life you know uh, in abundance and we are like meant to be like that, the oaks of righteousness, you know, full of God's power and life. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. You know, we look at ourselves and we don't like what we see, but we're made to display the glory and splendor of God. Isn't that amazing? You're unique uniquely made never in history has been has there ever been someone just like you Ali's a twin but a twin is still not like her you know it's just amazing what God can do we are um you know the they in this this scripture we will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. You know, that is God's people. The walls must be built again and repaired where they've broken down. The watchmen must be positioned back on the walls to alert the gatekeepers to open or close the gates. Then the intercessors can then be told by the watchmen and the gatekeepers, this is what you need to be praying into. This is what we see coming over the horizon. We need to be praying because we can see Jesus coming. You know, we need to be alert. We need to be working together in unity. 
for the good and the protection of every man, woman, and child. Not jealous or intimidated by each other's gifts, but honoring one another so that we can really flow to the absolute best and, and really pick up, you know, what God is doing. And I'll give you an example. The Women's Hospital, the 14th of November, 2021. There was an improvised explosion device carried by a passenger in a taxi. The device was ignited, killing him and injuring the driver. The police later declared it was a terrorist incident. The background of the story was this. A man called Emad al Swilmeen was living with a Christian couple in Liverpool and attended the Liverpool Anglican Cathedral. Nobody discerned, nobody, that he had an evil agenda. Sometimes discernment causes us to see things and we go, oh gosh, that's a horrible thought. How can you be so horrible thinking that? Anybody had that? But they had not discerned that he was a danger at all. They were not watching. He had requested asylum and had been rejected six years earlier. But he was still in the country. He'd overstayed since his asylum request had been rejected. But he had not been deported. The governmental gatekeepers were not keeping the gates secure. We did not know why, but our team were on red alert. And we didn't know why, but we were praying for the women's hospital. We were praying every week. You know, we met, we don't know why we're praying. We pray protection over the women, over the staff, over the visitors, everything about the women's hospital we were praying protection over. And we'd started that very early in 2021, praying for the protection. We were being watchmen and intercessors over the place. I was at a, a church leaders meeting and the burden about the women's hospital was so strong and I said to the leaders, please, will you ask your congregations to pray? With there's something about the women's hospital, uh, something about the babies being born, but there's something about the protection of the women's hospital at this time. Please, will you get your people praying? They didn't. They didn't hear. And later, they apologized. I had a phone call from one of the senior leaders saying, Sue, you were right. And we were wrong. We're so sorry. It's too late then, isn't it? It's too late. Bless them. But the story could have been so much worse. Had the bomb gone off where the guy wanted to actually ignite the bomb, it would have been catastrophic. There was a big memorial service, the Poppy Day services that go on in Liverpool. And... That would have been catastrophic. Thousands of people could have been killed or injured. The good news was that there was not even a pane of glass broken at the women's hospital. I was devastated when it happened. Devastated. God, we've prayed. I don't know what else we could have prayed, what else we could have done. And when I'd finished whinging about it, God then spoke and he said, but Sue, there wasn't a pane of glass broke. They came to the right place because you'd prepared the ground. It was the safest place for a bomb to have gone off. Why did God not expose it before? I don't know. I don't know. You know, but the, even the taxi driver said it was miraculous. And we need to be awake and we need to be alert it's about us being in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing so that heaven can constantly come to earth through us as we're watching as we're praying as we're being the gatekeepers that open and close the spiritual gates 
I'm going to ask Ali to come now. And we're going to look at the roles over these um, next few hours of the watchmen, the gatekeepers, and the intercessors. Um, Ali. So I'm going to have a look at the role of the watchman and what does it actually mean to watch or to look out into the distance, to investigate, to get a new perspective, to see an approaching danger. See, when the watchman sees someone approaching, he must discern, is it friendly or foe? A good opportunity or a problem? And so in these days especially, and I remember in our team in 2020 when we came, when we prayed and said, what, what's the Lord saying? I think everybody individually said, we need the gift of discernment. And how we need the gift of discernment, we need to utilize it so, so, so much now. Um, and that's the amazing thing. We're always given what we need. Holy Spirit gives us what we need, but we've got to use them. We've got the gifts, but we have to use them. And of course, the more you use the gift of discernment, the more sharp it becomes. You know, and, and, and also we're, we're discovering more and more about the more you um, check things with others. Other, you know, solid questions, ones you can trust. You know, is this what you're discerning? You know, so we need the gift of discernment in these days. So Isaiah 56 verse 10, it speaks of the blind watchman. A picture, unfortunately, of many of the church. You know, in Mark 8 verse 18 it says, Do you have eyes but fail to see? And ears but fail to hear? It's challenging. Mm. Deuteronomy 32, verse 28. It says, they are a nation without sense. There's no discernment in them. Proverbs 28, verse 2. When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers, but a ruler without, with, sorry, but a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. It's no wonder we're in so chaos. A ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. Really very powerful verse. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God but considers them foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. How we need to be such discerning people of the spirit. Not of what is going on in the natural, but of the spirit. You know, when you're watching things, watching the media and what's coming through, how are we discerning through, our, through the spirit and not through our natural eyes, our natural ears? Ask Holy Spirit. I keep asking, ask Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you saying? So to be a good watchman, and a watchman is just a position. It's not about men and women. It's a, it's a position. It's a, it's a role. It's, so to be a good watchman, to be understood by others, we really, really, really need the help of the Holy Spirit. It's our responsibility as watchmen to sound the alarm and to communicate clearly. But how others respond is not our responsibility. But when we do see something, we need to communicate clearly and make sure that it's being um, spoken out. Ezekiel was one of the first watchmen appointed in the Bible. And his appointment is found in Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Son of man, I've made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. You know, this passage not only gives the job description, um, but it also a severe warning of what will happen if the watchman doesn't do the job with integrity. Hear that word, integrity. 
you know, and read the rest of that passage for yourself. But it's important, again, the integrity. You know, Sue's been mentioning about cleaning ourselves up, you know, letting the Holy Spirit bring things to the surface, dealing with things. 2 Samuel 18 verse 24 tells us, While David was sitting between the inner and the outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall. And as he looked out, he could see a man running alone. And the watchman called out to the king and reported it. You see, in these days, the Lord's taking us higher. You know, in, Jerem in Revelation it says, come up higher. You know, the Lord wants us to see things at a higher level. Not from an earthly perspective, but from the heavenly places where we are positioned right next to him. And, and that's, you know, the watchman would go up to the roof to the higher place. Isaiah 21 verse 6 shows us what they need to do. You see, the responsibility of the watchman is to see, to discern, and to alert the gatekeepers so that they know whether to open the gates or whether to close them. Um, and also when to do it as well. Timing is important. And you know, really skilled watch watchmen in those days, they could even recognize the runners by their stride, you know, um, before they could even see their faces. You know, again, how, how discerning are we? Do we recognize things when it's of the foe? Do we recognize the enemy? How sharp are we? How sharp are we? Now, the great news, and this is so good, is we don't have to watch on our own. <laughs> Thank goodness. Psalm 1 verse 6 tells us the Lord is a watchman. You know, and that's exactly what was happening when he gave us the alarm about the women's hospital. He put that burden on us. We didn't understand. You know, so when you're given a burden, don't dismiss it. You know, say, Lord, is this of you? And you'll find other people have that same burden as well. So thankfully, the Lord is a watchman. And it says in Psalm 121 verse 5, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Wow, isn't that amazing? But the way of the wicked will perish. The Lord watches over us. He is our shade at our right hand. Wow, so we can, we can be in perfect peace knowing the Lord himself watches over the righteous. Wow. So the watchman, um, as I shared before, needs to stand in the high place where they can have the clear view, the bigger picture. You know, we need to use all our senses. Lord, you know, heighten our spiritual senses in these days. You know, um, the Lord's been challenging me about my senses, you know. Um, what am I allowing my senses to look at, to hear, to and in these days, I really feel the Lord needs to cleanse our senses and to really challenge us, what are we allowing in? What are we paying attention to? Oh, Lord, Lord, heighten our spiritual senses. Habakkuk 2 verse 1. I will stand on my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me. You'll be aware I'm giving lots of scripture. It's so important we know the word of God because that is our lamp to our feet, a light to our path. And especially in the dark days, we need that lamp burning brightly. So I don't apologize for using them because that is the plumb line that Sue talked about on Friday night. This is our plumb line. In Nehemiah 1, you know, Nehemiah was concerned that the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. Its gates had been burned with fire. So he did a prayer walk by night and walked around the city examining the walls and the gates. You know, just hearing a few conversations and people are saying, oh, such a place, you know, it's full of, um, you know, um, bad behavior and this is happening, that's happening and so forth, you know. 
the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. It feels like so many of our places where we're living is in a mess, is in disrepair. You know, the enemy's having a field day, you know. So what did Nehemiah do? He did a prayer walk. He went by night. I wonder why he went by night. Uh, interesting. But he did a prayer walk. You know, have we lost the art of prayer walking and looking and seeing? And he examined the walls and the gates. And then he called all the people to take responsibility, to rebuild the sections of the wall. Everyone was involved. Priests, temple servants, businessmen, families. So there were no gaps. Each group working in partnership with those around them. And when the enemy tried to stop them, it says in Nehemiah 4 verse 9, we prayed to our God and we posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. You know, Nehemiah gave the people weapons and spoke encouraging words to them. And this is why we need the church to be released into the giftings and the positions that the Lord has pointed us because the, the prophet Nehemiah couldn't do it on his own. He needed the people. We are the people. We need to rise up. And um, in another session, I'll share a little bit more about my husband. And I think I shared last time about the work he's doing within the town of our, um, where I live. And it's interesting to see what the Lord's doing because he's now mobilizing people around him. You know, it started off with just him walking and then he gathered a friend. And then the people start to mobilize. You see, and this is what is happening. I was talking to a lovely lady there, doing, you know, the food, all the food hubs. And, you know, and again, you can't do it on your own. You start gathering people. And actually, some of them might even be secular people. But that doesn't, that doesn't matter at all because they're with people who carry his presence, people who bring his light. And um, so it's so key. This message is so key that the body of the church rise up to be and to partner and to do what God is doing because you know church has not worked in the past this is why it's so significant we are in a new era the past will not work anymore you know it's a new era we've got to rise up you know with the new wine skin the new wine and be the people God has created us to be where we work together in harmony and then the the um the walls will be repaired you know it's so so significant and um, this we're in an ex exciting and challenging time um but god is in control he knows exactly his plan he's got every solution to every problem in every town and city and family and so on he has the solutions we just need to watch and be alert so Isaiah um, 62, verse 6, I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You know, it can be lonely spending time on the walls when you peer into the distance, um, but it can be really rewarding when we see our families, our church, and our city protected. And when we're able to announce the good things, good things are coming because I am tired of hearing about all the bad things. It just makes you feel, oh, and so down. But it's time. We've got good news to share. You know, so watchmen, they weren't only just used in the Old Testament, but they also can be found, some of the words used can be found in the New Testament. You know, Colossians 4, verse 2, devote yourself to prayer. Keep alert with an attitude of thanksgiving. Let's not moan like everybody else. Let's be thankful, you know. Be thankful that revival has been dispatched. Be thankful, even though you might not see it. Let's be thankful. Do you know, um, when um, we, we've had a, so the last few years has been in and out, in and out, in and out of hospital after hospital after hospital. I think I know every single one. I think I know most of the staff has been like that. You know, we've been in A&Es and, oh, and it is awful when you go in stretches you know um people being treated in the corridors and not proper beds and so forth but you know what we went in giving thanks to the staff and it's amazing when you give thanks how doors open 
And it's amazing. We don't go in moaning. Oh, look at the state of this. Da, da, da. You know, because everyone else does that. We bring life to people. You know, in the, in the darkness, that's what we do. We bring life and hope and joy and peace. And it opens doors. It's amazing what happens. Um, Luke 21 says, Keep alert at all times. Pray in order you may have strength to escape all the things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So again, we're told to be alert, to be awake. Alert, awake, watchful. And, you know, not only that, but we're told to be awake, watchful for the bridegroom coming. You see, as Sue shared, there's a lot of shaking going on, so we've got to be aware of the enemy, but also about the, the groom is coming back. The groom is coming back. And so, you know, this is, the Lord is getting us ready as well. He's preparing the church. Um, so Matthew 25, it talks, and you'll know the story really well. It talks the story of the wise and the foolish virgins. You know, it says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but they didn't take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Who do you think sounded the cry? It would have been the watchman. Then all the virgins woke up, they trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Come on, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, you go, you go and find some oil for yourself. Buy some for yourself. But obviously, while they were out on the way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in, and they went to the wedding banquet. But obviously, the ones who missed, the door was shut. And they said, Lord, open the door. But Jesus said, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. How challenging that word is. How we need to be a church awake with our oil, full of the Holy Spirit, full, ready, so that whenever he comes, we're ready. But we should be so discerning anyway. We know he's ready. I mean, it's, it's, it's happening, isn't it? You know, the, the scripture says in the end times, you will see these things happening, and they're happening now. So we need to be ready, ready. And, you know, I just want to, you know, honor Robert and Helen and what they do here, the team here, because they are so alert and ready they are preparing you all for now. Now, there's not many pastors who do that. Um, and pandemic, they were taken by surprise, but not Robert and Helen. They're, they were ready, and they are ready. God is equipping them. He's equipping them, and he's preparing each of you so that you can stand your own ground. You know, we have to be... Um, one-to-one -one with God. We can't live off other people's faith anymore. We've got to take responsibility for ourselves, you know? Um, and, and we, just as they disciple you, you then have to go and disciple others, you know? Um, we need each other more than ever. You know, when the country was at war, you know, uh, you still saw the poster, didn't you? And it said, we need you, you know. And God needs us. He needs every single person here. Every single person, every single person listening. He needs us all because 
We are in urgent days and we need to be awake and alert to the Spirit. And what is the Spirit doing? And work and flow with the Spirit. Because we know who we are as people um, chosen by him, appointed by him for such a time as this. And we need to rise up and be the people he has called us to be and do our best. Whatever that looks like and it's for different for every person here. So therefore, keep watch, keep watch, because we don't know the day or the hour. And then just to finish, you know, one of the most heartbreaking stories of the failing of the watchman is found in Matthew 26, verse 40. When Jesus asked his disciples, will you watch and pray with me? And when Jesus returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping. And he said, couldn't you men just keep watch with me for one hour? That's what he said to Peter. (coughs) Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh, don't we know about the flesh? how the flesh is weak but you know again we need to work from our spirit from the spirit man not by how we feel not about what's going on we have the power the holy spirit living in us And you know, you may feel awful, but when the spirit starts to move, you forget about yourself and just allow Holy Spirit to move. Whoa. You know, if that ever was a lesson for us, you know, when Jesus needed his disciples the most, they were asleep. When God needs his people the most, are we asleep? Are we? No, we've got to be awake. We have to be awake because God needs his people to mobilize them. So continuing this story, Jesus went away for a second time and he prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them, he went away once more, and he prayed the third time, saying the same thing. (coughs) Then he returned to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. You see, despite the lack of from his disciples Jesus took the cup he knew the father's will and he went and he did it and it's because of what Jesus has done on the cross we have the victory and we now we can rise up each of us have his Holy Spirit in us Jesus lives within us the Prince of Glory so we're not on our own anymore so we can say to our flesh Be silent. We can stir up the spirit within us and do those things that we've we dreamt about. You know, there's a whole whole piece of paper there that um, you know Robert put up, and I said, "Is that what revival looks like?" You know, these are the things we've dreamed about. This is the time. This is the time when we allow the Holy Spirit to rise up in us, a group of people. This is the time we will see all these things happening. But we need to be awake. We need to be alert. We need to be watchful. Otherwise, it's going to bypass us completely. Amen. So um, I'm going to hand over to Sue, bearing in mind we've only been given another five minutes. <laughs> wow. What we want to do is um, activation. Um, and I'm going to ask some questions and maybe over lunch 
you can talk in groups um, as you have lunch together. Um, we want to ask you some questions. What do you see coming into your community that is hindering the kingdom of God being established? What do you see coming into your community that is hindering the kingdom of God being established? Yeah, number two, have we been watching? Have there been times when we've not sounded the alarm? And number three, have there been times when the alarm has been ignored? How do you feel about that? So we want to ask you those questions. Maybe you can, over lunch, just talk about those in your groups. They'll be on the screens and um, you can feed back about that later on. And later on, if you know that you're a watchman or you know someone else here is a watchman, we want to pray for you um, as we go forward as well. I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. belongs to you and if you are for me and if you are for me who can be against me for Jesus there's nothing impossible for you when all I see are the ashes you see the beauty When all I see is a cross, God You see the empty tomb So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you And when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every
every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. The prayer book. Wednesday is education, and it just goes through Thursday for the legal system, which definitely needs a lot of prayer, doesn't it, as well in these days. Um, Fridays for our health systems for the NHS, for hospitals, and Saturday is praying for leisure and entertainment. Again, that we need that cleaning up, don't we? The media, what a mess the media is in. Um, so they're at the back. Um, if, you, if there aren't enough um, and you want more than one or two, um, if you let us know, you know, we can send them out to you. So they're only a pound each, um, but if you buy more, you know, we can apply a discount to that. Um, so if you see either or Ali or I, um, that would be great. Thank you.